There is a systematic way that you would go about with improving your car. It doesn't matter if you have a street car like this or if you have a dedicated track car like the vehicles that I have inside my tents. The easiest way to find the weak points of the car is going to be by pushing the car to its limits. Now the easiest and fastest way to get that done is to bring your car to a racetrack. If you push your car and do simply three hot laps, I can pretty much guarantee that you will find the weakest links. On top of that, I bet that your lap time will have improved over your first. This leads me to the most important modification out of anything. You know what that is? Driver mod. There is no replacement for seat time. You can have the fastest, most competent car in the world, but if you don't know how to handle it, you're not gonna be breaking any lap times. So you have some money set aside. You wanna put that money into your car, but you know, what is the best thing that you should be doing first? What should you be upgrading first? Should you be doing brakes, engine, you know, the tires and all that stuff? The way that I see it is that if you theoretically think about this and you install a modification or an upgrade so that the next modification that you do relies on that previous mod, you'll never have to worry about installing supporting mods. So in short, you'll be installing the supporting mods first. So before you, let's say, upgrade your engine, you'll upgrade the transmission. Before you upgrade the transmission and all that stuff and you make more power, you want to upgrade the brakes. Before you do the brakes, you'll do the tires. So like there's a systematic way to all this stuff. And if you follow this method of madness, the Melmast method of madness, you guys will have a car that's gonna be reliable, you'll be able to beat on it, and you shouldn't have to worry about any headaches down the road when you install aftermarket parts. Before you blow any money on upgrades, do a solid once over on your car to get a good idea for its physical condition. Inspect your tires, your bushings, control arms, engine, transmission, cooling system, brakes, and anything else you can think of. If any part of it looks like it's to be somewhat damaged, this would be a terrific time to spend a couple extra bucks by replacing any faulty part with upgraded versions, versus buying a stock part, especially if you know that you're going to upgrade it in the near future. If your tires are bald, you might want to upgrade to something with a little bit more tread. If your brakes are low on life, you may want to upgrade to a bigger brake kit. If your shocks are leaking, now might be a perfect time to upgrade to coilovers. Given that all of the mechanical parts in the car are in good working condition, one thing that you definitely want to do is change out all of the fluids that you have in the vehicle so that the engine, the transmission, and every part that's going to be surrounded by fluids can properly operate as it's supposed to. This preventative maintenance is going to be the easiest and best way to keep your car on the road for a long time. Now, if you buy any car used, obviously you're gonna be getting something that isn't new. So it is going to be a little bit worn, which means that any fluid that's in the car should be replaced. Now, obviously there's different intervals and stuff like that as to when you should replace whatever fluid, but if you buy a used car, and let's say you don't have the vehicle's service history, you don't really know when the fluid was changed, if it was at all. So if you guys get a used car, Change everything while you guys have the car up in the air. That's the first thing I would do. If you want to improve your vehicle, there is one part that makes every difference in the world. It allows your vehicle to connect to the road better than any other modification out there. You guys know what that is? It's tires. If you're driving on cheap, old, underinflated, neglected, cracked, dry rotted, whatever tires, you're gonna be leaving performance and safety on the table. Now that doesn't matter if you guys are tracking your vehicle or if you're just driving it on the street. Old tires is not safe and not something that you should ever keep on your vehicle. If you ever notice that they are dry rotting or cracking, you should definitely consider replacing them. It doesn't matter if you're aiming to be safe and proactive on the street or if you're aiming for the best possible lap time. Old tires will not make either of those possible. So if you aren't planning on increasing the wheel diameter or the wheel width, Ideally right now should be the prime time to upgrade your tires. Now obviously tires and a wheel setup, you know, it does get to be pretty expensive. So if you can play it around when your tires are getting low on tread, so you can sell the wheels and then buy wheels and tires after those tires are pooched, you're gonna be getting the most out of them. So that's my advice to you guys. At the same time though, if you do plan on upgrading other parts to your car, like the suspension, the engine and trans, changing your tires right now is not the thing that I would do. Now I can tell you guys for a fact, it is difficult to get a baseline for your car and to find what the weak points of the vehicle are on the street. Now if your car is very not performance oriented, let's say, you may be able to determine on the street what that is, but I find it very easy to find a lot of the weak points of your car if you were to bring it to your racetrack. By just driving my Civic on the street and not even pushing it that hard, I was able to find out that these brake pads are absolutely crap without even driving it hard. Like, I was able to find brake fade. When you upgrade any of these components, you'll be able to push it so that it can absorb more heat or shed off more heat easier. That allows you to track your car and make it reliable. 
before I go ahead and replace the entire braking system, you'd be surprised how much better replacing your stainless lines and brake fluid does for your braking system. Now, if you want even more than that, you can upgrade the factory one piston slider caliper for a fixed four piston big brake kit. Now, this is going to utilize a bigger rotor, bigger pads, and a larger caliper. It's going to give you more braking pressure. It's going to give you a higher thermal capacity and better braking performance all around by swapping to this kit. If you guys have a daily driver, it's not exactly ideal. I would say that that is overkill, but if you want a really good upgrade, especially for the money, that's what I would do. I'll have a link to this video once it's installed. You guys can click it right here. 95% of the cars that you'll find in stock form, you'll be able to see that you can drive it, you know, not really paying attention to anything else on the road, and it's gonna be pretty forgiving. You know, like you could drive it up a curb, you can hit speed bumps, you can do a lot of things that aren't exactly ideal or gentle on the car, but the car will handle it, it will take it, it'll just, you know, accept it for what it is. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I really don't want ride height that's that forgiving. I know for a fact I'm not going to be driving over any curbs, so I'm not going to be living with that atrocious ride height. Upgrading to a set of adjustable coilovers will give you a ton of extra upgrades. So you can adjust the ride height, the ride quality by changing the dampening and preload. You can change the spring rates on the actual coilover setup. And if you guys want to change your alignment too, you can do that. The BC coilovers that I have have adjustable camber plates up top, which will allow you to dial in your suspension. And that leads me to the next upgrade. The precise orientation of your wheels and tires in relation to the body of the car are what make up your vehicle alignment. Vehicle manufacturers will recommend either more or less camber, more or less toe, and you can play around with that as you wish for performance oriented alignments. But they give you a baseline in the beginning to start you off. You can dial away from there, but keep in mind that typically leads to more tire wear, but it also means potentially better grip and shorter lap times. Factory vehicle alignments, they typically make it so that the car is very numb, it's not gonna be performance oriented by any means, and it's going to be very predictable for anyone to just jump in the car and drive it. Stock vehicles, they typically lead to understeer versus oversteer. It's very easy to control understeer, you just let off the throttle and slow down a little bit, versus oversteer when the back end starts to overtake the front, you have to counter it and control it, and it's a skill that not everyone has. If you want to optimize your car's handling even more, you want to upgrade some of the parts in the car that have to do with your alignment, such as control arms, stiffer control arm bushings, roll center correction kits, sway bars, and even chassis bracing. Those will all help in increasing your car's predictability as the suspension will have less slop, the steering will be more performance oriented, the bushings will have less deflection, the sway bars will allow you to adjust understeer and oversteer, the chassis bracing will help stabilize the body of the car while it's under load, and the control arms will help angle all the wheels in the direction that they need to be. This becomes even more important when you upgrade other parts of the car like power, brakes, or even aero. If your car can't handle its own weight and dynamic behavior when you push it to its limits, how will it be able to handle it when it becomes even more modified? One of the best ways that you can upgrade and improve the performance of your car is by replacing the factory wheel and tire setup with a better one. Factory wheels are typically cast aluminum, pretty cheap to make, that's why you know they're pretty much found on mass produced vehicles. They are not exactly performance oriented, they're decent, but there's definitely improvements available. This 17 by 7 wheel here from Acura that's on my Civic is a factory wheel and it comes in at 21 pounds, which is pretty heavy for such a small wheel. I'll be changing out those factory Acura wheels for lighter aluminum ones that come in at 20% less weight while also being an inch and a half wider than those other ones. That means that it requires 20% less energy to get the wheels going, 20% less to slow it down, 20% less to change directions, and when you think about it, that makes a big difference overall. Running a wider wheel also allows me to run a wider tire, which will give me more mechanical grip while even using the same brand tire. That unsprung weight loss and extra grip that you're gonna be getting by swapping out your wheels and tires will drastically change your car's handling for the better. The main reason why I'm telling you to upgrade your wheels and tires at this point is because you'll already have your suspension dialed in exactly how you want. So with the adjustable coilovers and camber arms, you'll be able to dial in the suspension, get the alignment set however you'd like, and then at that point, you can precisely figure out what spec wheel and tire you want for your desired fitment. On the note of upgrading your car for the better, there's two modifications that you guys can do that aren't exactly ideal for a street car, but if you do want to increase your performance, this is when you would do them. 
Now that is going to be removing weight from the car. Now that's typically done by removing parts, let's say like the rear seats, the spare tire, uh, sound deadening, your headliner, B pillar, and like basically mostly comfort parts of the car that make your car dailyable. It makes it what it is. If you guys have a race car, it doesn't matter. You can take all that stuff out and you'll be saving weight. And that's the main goal. For a purpose built car that's meant to go fast, take it all out. The second type of upgrade that I wouldn't necessarily suggest, at least for a street car, is like a big diffuser down at the front and a big wing in the back. Now, if this is a pure track car, obviously, yes, that is going to help suck the car down into the ground more, which will help with lap times, but it might get a little bit too much negative attention on the street. The very last piece of the puzzle that you guys probably know what I'm going to be talking about now that you should be upgrading is power. Power will not only stress every other component of the car, but by adding more power, you're adding more heat. So this, in theory, should be the last part that you should be changing out if you want to go faster. If you guys want to improve your lap times, if you guys want to improve safety, this is not something that you should be improving or bumping up. The more power your engine makes, the more capable your transmission and drivetrain have to be to withstand all that extra power. The more power you make, the more you're going to be stressing your factory brake setup. That also means that you should be improving your suspension because the more power you make, the more G-forces your car should experience, especially under load. That means that having a well-sorted suspension setup is a must for a high horsepower vehicle. If you guys want to stay on the conservative side of things and you want to go full bolt-on with the car, that means that you're going to be replacing the entire intake system, exhaust system, and then you're going to need a tune. Now, you can also go past that and you could do a full motor build, kind of like what I'm doing, or you can also turbocharge or supercharge the car. And at that point, you would have to upgrade every part that I mentioned in this video and then some. Something like a transmission upgrade or even clutch and flywheel upgrade is almost a must when you really increase the power by a good amount. If you are looking to track your car, heat is by far the biggest enemy and the biggest thing that you're going to have to combat. The difference is going to be you being able to do one hot lap versus five hot laps lap after lap. So depending on what you plan on doing for your car, it will pretty much change what modifications you want to put on the car. So obviously I'm going to be upgrading the brakes on my car, but instead of running a track dedicated race pad that's going to be seeing super high temperatures, I might just upgrade to a higher temp or a higher performance street pad. It all depends. Carefully planning out your build before you get into it is super important and it also saves you money in the long run. As for the smaller things like shift knobs, short throw shifters, and smaller things like that, that don't require you to perform any other kind of supporting mod, you can pretty much do those at any point during your build. You can start off with them and nail those all off in the beginning, you can space them out, or even save them all till the end. It's entirely up to you guys. Now, the reason why I would say to not do them all in the beginning is because those are typically cheap, and you can kind of space those out or you know add another mod whenever you're, let's say, saving for a bigger one. So let's say you're saving for wheels and tires and those are gonna cost you 1500 bucks. Well, you can throw on a $50 shift knob on there and enjoy something in the meantime. My advice to you guys is perform the recommended preventative maintenance before you get started with modifying your car. Then once you do that, perform the supporting mods. You know, upgrade the brakes, upgrade the tires, get the car handling well so that it can withstand the extra power and then give it the extra beans. Those supporting mods will allow you to progress through your build. It'll make a very safe street car and a very capable track car. I'm really hoping that by watching this video, it's given you guys a realistic expectation for your car. Also, how you should pretty much budget accordingly. So you'll have an idea as to what you should modify in what order. And if you price out all the parts for your car, you'll have an idea what you're getting into. Planning and doing all this stuff beforehand is super important in my opinion. If you guys agree with me, give me a thumbs up. If you guys don't agree with me, let me know in the comment section what way you would modify your vehicle. Would you do power first and then find out every other supporting mod after that? You tell me. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.